In this video, I will show you how to translate a Word document in SDL Trader Studio 2015. But first, let's have a look at the material that we're going to deal with. We have a small Word document that looks like this. It has about uh, 10 segments. It has a title, a subtitle, a picture, a few bullet points, and some portion of text is in italic. Next, we have some sample terminology in the form of an Excel spreadsheet. So we only have two columns, one for Finnish terms and the other one for the corresponding English terms. And finally, we have a reference TM in the TMX format that we will be using for concurrent search purposes. Trados is actually made of two separate programs. First, there is a Studio, which is the translation environment. And then there is a Multiterm, which is the program that manages your terminology. Before we switch to Studio, we are going to convert our Excel terminology into a multi-term term base. And instead of using multi-term, which is a little bit too complex for such a simple case, we're going to use something called Glossary Converter. So Glossary Converter is an open exchange app. It's free and it's very easy to use. There are basically two buttons, in and out. And here we will be using Excel as input. So I'll just drag and drop my Excel file to the in button and I will obtain as the output a uh, multi-term term base. So here it is, Suntofi and SDLTB, that's the extension of uh, multi-term term base. And there are, in addition to this main file, there are four auxiliary files. Now I no longer need glossary converter, so I'll close it and I'll switch to Studio. In Studio, there are several ways to get started. I could use the Translate Single Document option, since I only have uh, one document to deal with. But here I will use the New Project option. So I click on New Project. I'll accept the suggestion of Studio to create a project based on a template. Next, I'll call my project uh, Sunto f-i-e-n so i know it's from finnish into english i'll accept everything else next as the source language i'll select uh, finnish as you can see the interface of studio is not fully optimized for high resolution screens such as the one that i have on my laptop but somehow i can read finnish finland and as the target language i will select uh, English UK. So I'll add that and now my language pair is OK. Next. Now I need to specify which file I want to translate. So I'll just drag and drop my Word document here and I'll click on Next. Now the next step is to specify what translation memory I'm going to use. Automated translation is the name used by SDL for machine translation. We're not going to use it here. I'll click on Next. So I'll select Create. There are two possibilities, file-based and server-based. I'll select file-based since I don't have a server. So I'll call my TM soon to F-I-E-N and I'll click on next. I'll accept all the defaults, next, and here again, finish. Now I click on close and I can move to the next step. Next step is for term bases. So we have already created a term base with glossary converter. I'll just add it, I'll browse, and here it is in my Trados folder. So open and OK. OK, next. And uh, now Studio wants me to use uh, SDL Perfect Match. I don't think it's relevant here, but I'll click on Next anyway. And now I think everything is OK. Next again, Next again, and Finish. So there's a lot of uh, clicking on Next buttons, but finally I'm done. And now Studio can do its things. And I'll close this one. So now I'm in the project uh, view and here again, as you can see, the part for the dates on the right is a little bit messy because uh, it's not optimized for high resolution displays, but I don't need that uh, for the time being. What I will do now, I will switch to the file view here. And here I can find my document, which now has the extension SDL XLIF, so that's the working format of uh, SDL Trader Studio. And I can open this file for translation. 
So now I'm in the translating environment. This is a familiar table layout, so two columns. On the left-hand side, I have my finished source segments, and on the right-hand side, an empty column for translations. In the middle, there is a column for the status, which will change as we translate, and our segments are numbered. And on the right-hand side, there is some uh, structural information. So in this case, everything is P for paragraph, but I could have something else as well. So I'm in my first segment, 9 Basset al Alkun. In English, it's uh, uh, getting started. The status has changed. Now, instead of a blank sheet, I have a small pencil, which is uh, the icon for draft. When my translation is ready, I can confirm it. So here is the corresponding icon on the ribbon. There are several ways to confirm. So the main one is uh, the first one here. Confirm and move to next unconfirmed segment. This is Control Enter. I'll press Control Enter. I can see the status of the segment I just left changed. So now there is not only a small pencil, but also a green check mark. Now I'm in the second segment, which also has three words, and uh, I can see there is a red square bracket on top of the third word, balikot, and this is to tell me that uh, this word was recognized as belonging to my term base. And indeed, if I look at the term recognition pane on top, on the right hand side, I can see that the word valiko which is the nominative singular form, was recognized, and in English it's menu. Here I have uh, valicot, that's the nominative plural, but uh, different form, but it was recognized. However, I remember that uh, in my Excel terminology, I had a word painike, which is a button. So again, that is the nominative singular. And here I have panic gate, which is nominative plural. But unfortunately, Studio was not able to recognize it. So it was different enough uh, for it not to be able to recognize it with the default values. So I'll have to enter the translation for that word, which is buttons. And, and now valicot menu. All I have to do is uh, type the first letter and uh, Studio will auto-suggest the rest, so I menu, so I just have to accept it with enter. Menu, and it says since plural, I have to add an S. Now I can confirm this translation with control enter, and I'm in the third segment. Here again, I have uh, one recognized term, so the red bracket. So this time it's Spineke, which was not recognized in the previous segment. Now it's Spineketta, that's the partitive singular. And although it's different from the base form, Spineke, it was recognized, and that's button in English. Now there is another word, uh, Ambit3, which is a product name. This one has a blue square bracket below it, and that's for what Studio calls recognized tokens, which basically are things like numbers, acronyms, and uh, alphanumeric strings, like uh, in this case, and so on. This is what used to be called uh, placeables, but they have changed the name. There is a way to copy such uh, recognized tokens, and it's by pressing Control comma. I get a small pop-up menu, and I can just accept it with enter, and I get my ambit 3. But here, since I'm a very fast typist, I'll just enter my whole translation here, so except that it's buttons, and I'll confirm it with uh, control enter. Now, the next segment, segment number four, has uh, three words, and uh, two out of these three words were recognized this time. The first one, Paina, it's press two, and the second one, Alotus Valiko, here found in the illative singular form, Alotus Valiko. Unfortunately, in Studio, there is no feature that would uh, let you copy all recognized terms together with the non-recognized terms in one go, like fragment assembly in uh, uh, MemoQ, or the similar feature in Deja Vu and WordFast and so on. So I have to enter these uh, terms one by one. So the first one is PR press 2. I'll enter the next, CIR to access C, that access the, and then Alotus Valico, it's start menu, so I can just type the first few letters, and Studio will auto-suggest the rest. 
start menu and I'll confirm it with control enter. Now, since segment number six was identical to segment number four, it was uh, already populated by studio. So that's the result of auto propagation. All I, I'll have to do is uh, confirm it with control enter once I have uh, translated the previous segment. So now I'm in segment number five. There is one term that was recognized. So it's pine up, press two, and I'll enter the rest. And the last word, it's again our valiko, this time in the inessive singular form, valikosa. And again, it was not recognized uh, this time, so bad luck. Terminology recognition, if you have a language like Finnish, it seems to be a little bit of a hit and miss affair. So you cannot be 100% sure that uh, your terminology will always be recognized. So in this case, I have uh, Valikossa, that's uh, menu. So here I have to enter the last word menu. I'll confirm this segment with control enter. And uh, now I'm in my auto propagated segment, which I only have to confirm with control enter. That's it. And uh, now I have uh, segment number seven. I have one recognized term again, press two. I can type the rest. And the last word, Taustavalo, I'm not sure about its translation in English, so I'll use now my reference TM. So for that, I'll click on project settings here and I'll add a new TM. It's a file based translation memory. And the type this time is not the native TM format SDLTM, it's a TMX. So here is my reference TM. I'll open it and I'll use quick upgrade to convert it into a native studio TM. Now it's ready, zero errors, that's good. Close and yes. I will be using this TM so it's enabled, it's okay. I don't need uh, lookup, I do need concordance since that's what I opened it for and I don't need to have it updated since it's only for reference purposes. So I'm done, okay. And now I can highlight this uh, word that I'm interested in. And the concordance search feature is here. It's uh, F3, the shortcut. So if I click on concordance search, I get some results. This word was found in this particular form, which is the genitive singular. If I had entered, uh, for instance, the base form, nominative singular, Taustavalo, I would also have some results. If I had entered the partitive form, Taustavaloa, I would have uh, no full match, but Studio would have been able to uh, give me fuzzy matches. So Taustavalon, genitive, 95% match, Taustavalo, nominative, 90%, and so on. If I had had a case like uh, Taustavalosta, that's the elective singular, I wouldn't have had any match. Anyway, I can see from these uh, concurrent search results that Taustavalo, in English, it's uh, backlight. So I'll highlight this word. There is no particular comment for copying highlighted text into the target segment. So I'll just use the standard Control C and move to the end and press Control V. Now, if I want to add this new term pair, Taustavalo, in Finnish and backlight in English, I can use either the add new term option here or the quick add new term. So that's the one I'll use since I'm in a hurry. And now my new term pair was added to the term base. I can close this and I can see that uh, this word now has the familiar red square bracket and it appears here in the term recognition pane on top. I can confirm my translation. Here for segment number eight, I have an 83% fuzzy match. We have two differences that are showed here. Previously, we had surrenta accessi, which is now in red with a strike through, and it's replaced by pienenta accessi uh, in green. And uh, in English, I need to replace increase by decrease. So I'll do it now. And the second change was ulospan, which means up. It has been replaced by alaspan, down. So I'll make the corresponding change here, down. And my translation is ready. So I can confirm it with Control Enter. Last segment, 
The first two words are a term, pilepainetuna, that's in English keep press to, so I just press K and I have the rest of my translation. Now I'll enter the rest and uh, I can see that uh, this portion of text here needs to be in italic, so I'll select it and I can either click on this icon or use the corresponding shortcut which is Control i like in Microsoft Word. So now my segment is ready, I'll confirm it and my entire document has been translated. I can save it with Control s and the last step would be to export the translated document. And for that, I'll select in Batch Tasks, it's a drop-down menu where I can find Export Files. I'll click on Next and uh, Studio will put that under my documents in a folder called Export Files. I'll accept that, Finish, and now it's done, Close. I'll reopen my SDL XLIF, yes. And now I'll locate my exported file. It was under Documents and it should be under Export Files, ENGB, and here it is. Indeed, now we have now the same document but translated into English and everything looks okay. We have our title, subtitle, picture, bullet points, and a portion of text in italic. So there you have it, how to translate a Word document in SDL Trader Studio 2015. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.